Hi, welcome to the Uma Uma interview. Um, we've got three UMIPs up for discussion this week. Um, the carbon price identifiers, a collateral omnibus, and a third one, which I can't quite see right at the minute. Um, if we start, hi Chandler, if we start with the carbon price identifier one, I know that we reviewed that last week. And I think that there's been some correspondence with the team. Yeah, uh, it's. I think it's in the same state as last week. Uh -huh. um, we don't think daily granularity. So I think the first problem is right now, the data source is daily granularity. I don't think that's been updated, but uh, hey, Hexi. Um, but the author said that like that's data that could they could increase the granularity of because I guess they have a relationship with the price provider. Um, I think the other problem was there isn't really other context for like what these index indices are, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we need like some sort of methodology to like calculate these without like this one specific price provider, at least get an idea of what they are. Um, Cause it seems like very much like custom indices. Um, mm -hmm. The other big one would be needing a price feed implementation, especially if this is going to be used with the perpetual contract. Then the other one based off of being used as a perpetual contract is like, this wouldn't really be useful for a perpetual unless there was also a funding rate, which would depend on having the other price feed implementation. Um, so we've talked about some of that. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how to say his name, but Endemion. End JKB, um, and he's thinking about, he feels like confident in creating the price feed implementation, but he's also thinking about perhaps not using a perpetual immediately. Um, mm -hmm. So I think there's, there will be some more <laughs> progress on this, but I do not think it's ready today. Uh, yeah. Okay, but uh, the idea how to deal with uh, price feed implementation, uh since there is no like the, the this more more frequent data so uh, th there needs so this price implementation needs some additional input on method how to get and calculate reconstruct this index like manually from scratch right well supposedly supposedly they can get more than daily granularity on on the actual pricing information from the the data provider that they listed i forget what the name was all right yeah i think it was some bit, bit or bit. bit data or something beta beta oh beta. yeah beta. yeah yeah mm -hmm. but even with that i agree like there needs to be like an other method to like reconstruct this because right now it's just like a black box api basically So basically, there's kind of further weight, uh, further work to be done around just its general construction. Yeah. So yeah. although we've put out certain specifics, the design might change to the extent that these might not be necessary or might not be the critical factors. Some things. Uh -huh. I mean, as an example, you could go from like a perpetual kind of has the most technical requirements out of like any of our contract types, right? Like you absolutely need a price feed implementation because you also need to include it within the funding rate updates, which happen all the time and absolutely mm -hmm. cannot be manual. Um, mm -hmm. They could like technically go to the extreme and say like, you know, we want to use this for an LSP. Mm -hmm. We would still we would still want a price feed implementation and most of the other recommendations, but we wouldn't need a funding rate identifier then. Um, and we would probably be like more relaxed on the price feed implementation requirement. Mm -hmm. um, 
sounds yeah, like they're probably it, 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 yeah in, in that case i think uh, for the lsp to uh, daily granularity could also like work in some scenarios i agree yeah mm -hmm. sounds like they're perhaps thinking about the emp but i think that's like information that isn't super relevant to like the immediate review since right now it is like referenced as for perpetual mm -hmm. are you in touch with the team sean yeah yeah okay um so i guess it's a no go pending kind of design conversations yep yeah yeah i think so okay cool um the second one that we had was the omnibus collateral there was a bit of an issue here with the no final fee yeah i can do that uh when uh -huh. we yeah um when we when i first created this it was in draft and then the, the final fee was just an absurd amount when before we had a live price feed they've subsequently got a live price feed and so i can easily just update this to uh, reflect what the current token price is just before we came in this call i had a bit of a look in, at the price on coin gecko um which would suggest around 25 grow but it did seem to be quite Sorry, just in case Sorry, um, I didn't catch that. Vary, say that one more time. Um, I had a look at the current price in CoinGecko, and it seemed to be sixteen thirty-five, but it also seemed to be quite unstable. So it yeah, might be worth picking up a little. It's a very new token, like literally just launched. Yeah. So, more than happy to put it at a reasonable rate above, um, mm -hmm. above uh, four hundred dollars, but. I think just to kind of like set some precedent here, we're, we're going to have a lot of these situations come up and figuring out a, a decent way to, to plan this out. So what I might suggest, and just let me know if this makes sense, but they had an initial price and it's currently sitting at, at you know, $16. Um, what I think mm -hmm. what we can do is maybe take a price that's the average between the two or a middle, because I do suspect the price could come down a little bit. And then this way, mm -hmm. it kind of covers us a bit. What do you guys think of that? Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think it's more of an art than a science for very new tokens. It's a good way like to put that. it. I like that. I'm, being, I'm an artist. <laughs> cool. cool. Okay. Um, so you'll kind of put together a sensible final fee and that one's good to go. Roger that. Excellent. Okay, the final one we had, oops, I've, oh no, 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 no. Um, this one isn't well named. The athlete X, I don't know. Okay, we had quite a few comments about these ones um, and we weren't entirely clear what exactly they were they were trying to achieve. Sean, did you manage to get in touch with them? No, Chandler's been talking with the Athlete X team. Chandler? Jeez, oh, I don't even know the Athlete X team put this together. Um, yeah, so basically what I want to do is create, uh, synthetic tokens that trade based on athlete performance. So, you know, if Tiger, I don't know, who's a very, like, if Lewis Hamilton is like doing really well in formula one, then like the synthetic token that he, that you can buy can like track his performance. So it's a speculation on, on, on athlete performance. Um, and they're, they're going to kind of create this price identifier using, um, I think it was Yahoo Sports or some big sport aggregation tool. 
and they can use the ASP to be able to create longs and shorts on that. So I, the last time I spoke to the team, I gave them some like heads up on how to structure this, but I haven't actually read this at all. Mm -hmm. And so what I did mention is that they, they should put something up just for some community review. Mm -hmm. They put something on the Discord as well. I don't think it got well reviewed there. Mm -hmm. So I think just I, because I, I don't actually, I haven't read this. What are some of the like main issues here? And so I can kind of take that back to the team and ask them to, to work on it. I take a great um, no, go ahead Sorry. At, at this one. I think uh, the first of all, the endpoint is a, like a numbered endpoint behind no DNS. I think that um, basically can change any time that it can go down any time. Um, there's no guarantee for the availability of the endpoint, which is one, I think pretty important um, thing is, is the, the availability and uh, secondly, um, is is how that price identifier is, is reconstructed on their backend. The logic needs to be formally documented. Um, I think these are the missing things. And the third thing is uh, is the is the way they're looking to reuse the parameter is unclear. Um, the essentially the price feed has a has an API or, or kind of a parameter key, right? Like Tom Brady uh, with a number of things. So. Um, there needs to be more be more clarification and finalization on how that um, key is going to be structured. What's the format? Um, is is that tracking a particular day of performance and um, et cetera, et cetera? So I think these are the core um, issues with this particular price identifier. Um, you know, outside of the syntax document, like, like you know, language things, and I think it's quite far away from being ready. Um, and it's not because the the UMIP is not like ready. It's more like the the price identifiers implementation itself um, needs a bit more work and validation in place. It's a good idea though. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> I can I completely Actually, agree. That, Actually, like yeah, I, Actually, that's amazing feedback. I can take that back to the team. It's like right now it's just a black box API. So we need to actually know what we're calculating. All right, or else there's like no verification at all that we can do. Um, I also think it'd be like much, much, much better. I mean, yeah, I, I don't actually know if this is true, but it looks like they're just hosting this API themselves. Um, I think it'd be much better if they used some sort of like known service out there uh, at least in my opinion, I don't know what you guys think about that, but it seems like there's a lot of services that can provide sports data. Um, I think there are, what they're taking is, is a, a data source and then applying like the processing on how you would value these athletes tokens. And so I think what they're doing on their endpoint is the post-processing that would apply on the original data i mean i'm not sure how complex that post processing is but you don't necessarily need to have that like behind an api and i think in some situations it's much better not to um you know what i mean yeah and kind of for mo most of the situations I, I think it would be more transparent to track actual like uh metric itself like the performance uh, or, or or whatever else and and do the financial contracts do their logic based on that or whatever the application is yeah i agree it's much better to have people like decide on if lebron james had like 10 points last night is that true rather than you know some like feeding 10 points into some like bespoke algorithm that's sitting behind like some sort of black box API. Like it'd be better to just have voters like vote on the first thing. Seems like there's quite a bit of work to be done in this one as well. I feel like it depends on the way the way they're trying to achieve achieve things. I agree that like um, betting LeBron with their scoring 10 points is is a uh, is much more clear and, and absolutely sec more secure but 
um, depending on what they're trying to do, um, creating like so many of these bets um, and have actual volume of each synthetics being minted uh, require extreme scale. And, and that is hard to achieve. Um, and maybe that is why they're aggregating some of these betting into a, a more reasonable number um, and explain to their customers as a, as a way to kickstart. I mean, every project have to think about their go-to-market strategy. And um, as an early project, I would assume, um, it's, it's going to be hard for them to, to get that market coverage. Um, so like as, as much as that's a practical approach, a better approach for Uma, we need to consider um, where the project stands in terms of their um, market coverage and uh, come up with a more feasible path forward. I think as a platform, as long as the, the, the process of calculating the numbers is, is secure and uh, clear, and then there's like available endpoints or ability to come up with that number for voters, I don't, I don't think we're in the position to, to fully guide how SportX is doing their platform. Yeah, I agree. No, I mean, I think it's, I think it's based on the situation, but like we don't really have even enough information to kind of speculate on which path forward is better. Um, yeah. Cause it's not really clear what's being calculated. Like you said. Yeah. Well, well one also, issue which was not quite clear was actually like base and code currencies and what, what kind of role this AX and uh, LBG had uh, at least I, I didn't understand is it like somehow interwined uh, with the actual like athlete performance and there is some additional calculation made there in the API endpoint or uh, it's something additional that all authors need to do and figure out themselves how to price it in terms of not not like in raw yeah. performance but also in terms of some <laughs> other uh, token yeah i think lbj is stands for lebron james i'm pretty sure but ax i agree with you oh i search i thought it was some latin american index but uh, <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I'm completely off the sports <laughs> so probably, yeah, yeah. You're, you're it stands for like it. The most famous basketball NBA player. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that that's a very important part, Rain. Is like if it's not that clear that you understand exactly what that acronym means, then it's not really well written. But yeah, also I agree with AX because it seems like they want to price these things in terms of AX tokens, which I don't think are tokens that actually exist yet. So that needs to be clarified, hundred percent. Um, AX is a token that they're launching. It'll be new, um, and they should have this. There will be at some point in the near future. They'll have a, a um, collateral UMA app. I also know they're like planning on launching hundreds of contracts, supposedly. So I definitely think we should strongly recommend that they write a price feed implementation for this that can be used by our proposer and disputer box. Yeah, I agree. I'll add that as a fourth point. I, I think we should easy. figure out, figure out the API question that like Hexi was talking about first. So like, is this the right source of data before actually building that implementation though? Sorry, Bora. Um, I thought this was designed to use the LSP. Yeah, but there, even with LSP, if there's hundreds of LSP contracts, then we could have hundreds of price requests, which would not be super, it's not like a KPI option where you know there's going to be one or maybe max two price requests in the next three months. So mm -hmm. setting like a long line this time would still allow for like verification of the price. Mm -hmm. Like if there's going to be hundreds of these, then it's not a super secure process if you're relying on like manual verification. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Thanks. At least that's my perspective on it. I'm, yeah. Um, I guess this is a no go pending. I mean, is it is it design pending design review, or is it just you know the 
the price feed and the clarification that we need. So, All right. A lot of points here, actually. I think most of what you have down there. Okay, so these are these are specific points that we need them to solve before this can go live or go for a vote. Probably one that's missing from that list is just actually explaining what is being calculated, like Hexi said. And that would go up to like the first number price. one. <laughs> <laughs> what is this price identifier for? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, are you in touch with them, Chandler? You're in touch with them, aren't you? Yeah, I haven't been in touch with them for some time, but mm -hmm. but I'll, yeah, I'll relay this message. Super, that's great. Thanks. Hey, Hexy. I haven't seen you because I was sharing my screen. <laughs> um, any other issues to discuss? Nope. I don't think so. Excellent. Thanks again, then. Thank you all. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.